نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مدل له ومن يدلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين وسلم قال الله في كتابه العزيز بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجانا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا وفي مكان آخر يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتون إلا وأنتم مسلمون الحمد لله Early all praise is due to Allah We praise Him We seek His help And we seek His forgiveness we seek refuge in Allah from the evil of ourselves, the evil of our own wrongdoings. And we understand that whoever Allah chooses to guide, there will be none to misguide that person. And whoever Allah lets go misguided, there will be none to guide that person. We testify that there is no God, no deity worthy of worship except Allah alone, he has no partner and that Muhammad, peace and prayers of Allah be upon him upon his cam companions and his family and all those who choose to follow him until the last day is the prophet, the messenger and the servant of Allah Allah says in the beautiful Quran Translation of which is Oh, you people Fear your Lord Who created you from one soul And from that soul its mate And from these two Sent forth many, many men and many women And fear and have consciousness of Allah Through whom you ask Of all your various needs And the wombs that bore you Truly Allah is always, ever, watchful over you. And in another place he says, O oh, you who believe, fear and have consciousness of Allah, as is his right, as we ought to, as you ought to, O oh, you who believe. And do not die except in a state of complete submission to him. And so it's off this last verse that we often hear, recited, said in, in khutbahs that I want to base the khutbah off today. Ittaqullah haqqa tuqatihi wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun. Have taqwa of Allah, have fear of Allah, have consciousness of Allah as is his ought. Fear Allah, see Allah, be with Allah as you ought to and do not die except as Muslims, except in a state of Islam, except in submission, complete submission to Allah. And so one of the questions we must ask ourselves when we come across an ayah like this is how? How do we develop taqwa of Allah? 
how do we understand it, how do we reach that, how do we make sure to fulfill this exhortation that is in the Quran and comes across in many other places in other ways as well. What is taqwa and how do we approach it? First of all, the ayah says, have consciousness of Allah as, as is His right. And we realize that as created beings, as limited men and women with limited potential, we need to ask ourselves, how could we ever really understand what that means? understand what taqwa means. So when I say, I want taqwa in my life, what does that mean? Many of us these days, we go throughout our week and we come to our five daily prayers or to anything else that's supposed to remind us of Allah, supposed to build taqwa in us and it's not happening. We're feeling, where is Allah? Where is my relationship with Allah? Where, how do I improve? Because these things that I'm doing, they're not bringing me to that place. They're not creating this thing that I want to feel, this taqwa, this consciousness, this witnessing that I say on my tongue with the shahada, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. I say that in every prayer I make. And every time, I want to make dhikr too, sometimes I say that Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah That's how I began my life as a Muslim and inshaAllah that's how I will end my life in this world too May Allah grant us the, the tawfiq to be able to exit from this world with la ilaha illallah being the last word upon our tongues Often we're in this position thinking I'm doing all the right things, aren't I? Why can I not find Allah in the Qur'an? Why can I not find Allah in Salah? Why, how can I not develop taqwa in all these things that he's saying will help develop taqwa in me? Allah also says in Surah Al-Baqarah that fasting is prescribed for you as it was prescribed as it was written for those who came before, in order that you may achieve taqwa. So some of us may be fasting in order to achieve that, in order to get to consciousness of Allah, but sometimes it doesn't happen. And so one of the first things we have to realize is who is putting the taqwa in our lives? Is it us who are doing these various activities that are going to bring us closer to Allah? No. No. Allah puts the taqwa in our lives. And Allah brings us close to Him. Allah is close to us. And our job is to turn ourselves to Allah in such a way that we start to realize how close we are to Allah. We start to realize that Allah is with us in every single moment. And not just when we feel like having Him with us. And so sometimes when we think, I'm doing this thing, why am I not achieving this result from it? For one, who is the slave and who is the Lord? Are we telling Allah when we want Him in our lives? Yeah, Allah, please come to me in my salah. But the rest of the time when I'm at work, when I'm driving on the freeway, when I'm with my family, I prefer you to take kind of a back seat there. But when I'm in my salah, I, I want you to be there. I need you to be there so that I can feel like I'm gaining something from salah. And surely, if you've written salah upon me five times a day, surely you want me to receive the benefit of that. So why am I not feeling you in the salah? Does that sound like the talk of a slave? Or does that sound like the talk of a Lord? Who is the Lord? And who is the slave? SubhanAllah. If we're going to be truly ready to see Allah in the places where we want to see Him, we have to be ready to see Allah in the places where we don't want to see Him. 
if we're going to see Allah when we come to the masjid, if we're going to feel the brotherhood and the sisterhood that Allah's deen should bring us, then we need to be prepared to see the changes that being true witnesses for Allah will bring in us when we're with other people and outside of the masjid. Now, oftentimes when we're with other people, we're not thinking of how to see Allah in that moment. We're not thinking of how to see Allah through other people. Often what we're thinking is, how can I see myself in that person? Because if I can see myself in other people, then I can deal with it. But Allah, I don't know. That's something that I really understand. I understand Allah when He comes to me in Salah. I understand Taqwa when I feel something and I feel close to Allah in Salah. But oftentimes, we can find Allah in the most remarkable of places. That when we truly understand that Allah is the creator of everything in this world, every person in this world, every action in this world, everything that could come about, He is the Lord, He is the creator, He is the originator, He is the overseer of every single thing. Once we start to understand that reality, we start to see that we can have the vision to start feeling Allah's presence in every part of our lives. But often when we're interacting with other people, we think that Allah is with us before we think that Allah is with other people. That if I see a brother who I've seen from the masjid and I see him in another context, not doing exactly the same thing that I do, in the exact same way that I do it, not making dhikr when I make dhikr, not making his prayer the way I make my prayer, I start assuming that Allah is with me and not with that brother or sister. <coughs> that if only I could convince that brother to be with me, that's how I could convince that brother to be with Allah. That's not how it works often. Often our own selves are the veils between us and Allah. Such that if we could start seeing how other people are close to Allah and how other situations involve closeness to Allah in them, then that would be truly a profound effect that we could have on society. The Prophet والسلام, was who he was and was able to develop the community that he developed not because not because he was the only one who saw Allah, but that he understood that he could bring other people to that station as well. He could see that in every person, their creator is Allah, and therefore, he could bring every person in his community, radiallahu anhum, may Allah be pleased with them, to some kind of consciousness in themselves that would bring them to see Allah in their own way. Because every person has their particular way that they find Allah. That doesn't mean to say that there aren't certain, certain specific ways in which, in which the path to Allah has been defined. No, we understand that Islam sets out a plan for us, sets out certain guidelines. We can't just go on our whims and think we can approach Allah by doing whatever we want to do and we can't let other people fall into that fallacy as well but still the specific way in which I find Allah and I find closeness to Allah is not the specific way in which another person will one example the many movies that come out in the summer, summer blockbusters, and now we're heading towards that time when the summer blockbusters start coming out. And many of us as Muslims, we wonder how could we, how could we really see Allah in a place like that? See Allah in a movie 
which has this big industry, often has things that we don't want to be looking at, bodies that we don't want to be looking at, language we don't want to hear, things we don't want to see. But one of the things about summer blockbusters is that it gives people who have no other frame of reference in which to feel the greatness that they know is present somewhere in the world, it allows them to feel that greatness. When you see big explosions on the screen, and when you see these huge storylines that go from looking like everything is a failure at the beginning to everything working out at the end, this is greatness that people can witness on the screen. And what is it when people want to see that and find pleasure in that? They're finding pleasure in remembering what it meant to experience greatness. Remembering that day that happened before we all came into this world when we witnessed Allah. And Allah asked us, Alastu bi Rabbikum, as we're told in the Quran, Allah asked every soul, Am I not your Lord? And every soul, all of us responded, Bala. But yes, you are our Lord. And so we can understand that when we begin to relate to others, and see how they might be inclined to seeing manifestations of Allah in this world, that's when we can start to connect to them. And when we, when we start feeling in ourselves how we can bring consciousness of Allah into our various parts of our lives, outside of the parts where we normally think that we'll find Allah, that will bring, a, that will bring us into a closer relationship with Him in those times when we do actually want to see Allah as well. So when we're on the freeway worrying about how to merge, where we need to get to, all of these things, when we start saying Alhamdulillah and making dhikr, saying Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, and saying salawat on the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, we start bringing consciences of Allah into that moment. When we look at the world around us as we're driving and we say subhanallah what Allah has created we're bringing consciousness of Allah into that moment and the more we can do that in our lives and the more we push ourselves and allow ourselves to be changed by the dhikr of Allah by the remembrance both on the tongue and in seeing his signs in the world and reflecting on them throughout every moment of our lives the more we can start to being open to that and start to train ourselves to do that, the more Allah will be present in all of those times, especially the times when we want Him to be present. So if we want khushu' in salah, if we want to understand the Qur'an, if we want to feel dhikr and we want to achieve taqwa, we have to be ready to take all of these other parts of our lives that happen outside of that. And regarding all of them, say, Allah. We give them up to Allah. We understand that they weren't even ours in the first place. Everything is for Allah, including ourselves. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'oon. We belong to Allah and to Him we are returning. If only we can wake up and understand what that means. I say this my speech and I seek refuge and seek forgiveness from Allah for me, for you and for the rest of the Muslims. Seek forgiveness from Him during this blessed time for verily He is most forgiving, most merciful. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen All praise is due to Allah, Lord of the worlds. Allah also says in the Quran, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitani Rajeem إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد Allah also says in the Quran that he and his angels send prayers upon the Prophet and peace upon him. O oh, you who believe, send prayers upon him and peace upon him. And in this thing too, 
We can understand too that when we read the Quran and come to things like this, that when we are with the people of Allah and when we are with those who are with Allah, that will facilitate our closeness to Allah as well. So I exhort you to taqwa of Allah. I exhort you to good companionship because it is through being with the people of Allah that they will bring us close to Allah. It is said that those who are making dhikr of Allah and praising Him, when they do so, those who are just around in the general area get the blessing too, and they get those angels. And what a blessed thing it would be to be with the angels and be with Allah when we say peace and prayers upon the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam. Allahumma salli wa sallim alayhi. وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين وعلى من تبيه بإحسان إلى يوم الدين. May Allah grant prayers and peace upon the Prophet Muhammad, upon his family, his companions, and all those who choose to follow him to the last day. May he make us among them. Ya Allah. Ya Allah, grant us taqwa. Ya Allah, grant us good in this world, good in the best world, good in the next world, and save us from the punishment of the fire. Ya Allah, help us to understand what good is in this world and what good is in the, in the next world. Ya Allah, grant us that consciousness, grant us that understanding, help us live according to it. Ya Allah, show us the reality of this deen and how we can live according to it. Ya Allah, help us to show others the reality of this deen and live according to it. Ya Allah, ruddan muslimina ila deenihim raddan jamila. Ya Allah, return the Muslims to their deen with a beautiful returning, Ya Allah, وَفَرِّجْ عَنْهُمْ فَرِّجْ عَنَّا أَجْمَعِينَ Ya Allah, grant us respite in this world, save all those people under oppression, especially those in this Ummah of your, your beloved Prophet wasallam, and count us among them on the last day. Do not let us die except they, we are among them. And that our last words in this, in this life are La ilaha illallah Truly understanding its meanings and implementing it throughout our lives Ameen, ameen Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen Aqmi salat